Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we want to dive into a topic that should be very high on the list of every merchants. We want to talk about data feed optimization. Now, a lot of merchants do not even know what that is, but I'll just give you an example how important it is. There is more than 2000 search engines, social platforms, social channels, marketplaces, custom channels in more than 60 countries around the world. And most merchants are only on Google and Facebook, and that's basically it, and they do it manually. There's a better way to do that, and that's what we want to talk about today. With me on the show, I have Jack van der Wilt. He's the founder and CEO of Data Feed Watch, and he is a shopping feed industry leader, a startup mentor, and entrepreneur. Jack held leadership position in both the United States and Europe, and he's also a seasoned guest speaker at industry events and mentors at Startup Bootcamp. So, Jack, definitely the right person to talk to when it comes to data feeds, and I would like to welcome him to the show. Hi, Jack. How are you today? Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for having me, uh, Klaus. I'm, I'm good. How are you? Very well. Jack, data feed. Um, not everyone knows what that is, what that means, what it does. Maybe give a bit of an overview, and, and let's get started there. Yeah, let me let, let me start very basic. Uh, 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 virtually every retailer wants to advertise his products on advertising channels like like Google, Facebook, comparison shopping sites, affiliate networks, and what have you. And uh, uh, in order to even get started, you need to tell the channel, you know, let's, let's, let's continue to take Google as an example. You need to tell the channel what the products are that you're selling. And in order to do so, Google basically says, yo, send me uh, an, an, an Excel file with all the product data in it. So the first column uh, uh, is the unique ID and then the title and the description and the price and the image link, you know, and everything else. Uh, uh, and then I understand what you sell and then I will enable you to create an advertising campaign in Google Ads. And uh, so anyway, that's not too difficult. You just need to make sure that you're meeting the requirements that Google puts up. So the unique ID goes in a field, you know, a column called ID. Uh, whereas your know, next day you want you want to also send a data feed with your product data to let's say price runner, and then to say, well, the unique ID needs to go in a field called SKU, right? And then the third uh, channel is going to want article number, and so they'll all have different requirements, not just for the field names, but also for the formats of the feed, uh, the content of the feed, and what have you. Uh, uh, so if that isn't enough trouble to begin with, they want you, rightfully so, to update your product data every day. And that makes total sense, not just because you are uh, discontinuing products and adding new ones, but also you're changing prices or let's say 10, 20 percent of your products uh, overnight. And most importantly, you run out of stock for some products, whereas you add new stock to other products that you used to be out of stock for. So, so much changes that you want to update that at least once a day. Okay, so far so good, but uh, you want to do that manually, that's a disaster. So you need to take action uh, at least once a day to get feeds up and running with three different formats and what have you. So anyway, life is too short, and especially you know, merchants, they're juggling like 10, 20 balls from buying stuff to selling stuff to operations, warehousing, and what have you. So they shouldn't be spending time on this. Hence, enter Data Feed Watch. So Data Feed Watch is a web-based application that uh, connects directly to your, uh, to your online store, whether that's a bespoke one or one on Shopify, Woo, BigCommerce, what have you, you know, we're integrated with everything. And then we're downloading all of your product data automatically every night or, you know, 24 times a day, if that's what you want. Subsequently, we enable and help you to create those data feeds uh, to Google, to Facebook, to Price Runner, to anywhere you would like to go, including custom channels. Uh, and then when that's in place, you know, you can still uh, optimize and change everything. Uh, but at least you know that every day, my data is taken from the store and updated on those channels. So I have fresh data. Uh, I will not be selling out of stock products. My prices will be updated. So will my sale price, uh, uh, et cetera. So first thing we help you with is meet those feed requirements. Subsequently, you find out if you send out, send out those feeds uh, to, for example, Google, uh, Google will disapprove a number of products because you forgot to add color as a separate field and, uh, you know, some other 
some of the products do not have a description or a price. So, uh, so the next thing you want to do is fix those problems so that Google will approve all of your products, which means that you will get to advertise these products. Uh, thirdly, now that we're at it, uh, you know, we might as well optimize the data. Uh, and you're thinking, well, you know, my data is pretty good. Well, sure, but the, the, you know, it's it may be optimized for your online store, which does not necessarily mean it is optimized for your advertising campaign. So let me give you a few examples. Uh, let's say you sell jeans, right? So you have, you have jeans.com, and uh, if a, if a, if a visitor goes there, you will go to the uh, 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 to the pants section, and uh, and there he will find the five five or one, right? So the page will just show the image of the uh, uh, of the pair of jeans and five or one. So five or one on the shops page is an excellent title. But if you want to advertise this very same pair of pants, you want the title to be, you know, remember what a product listing ad on the Google search looks like. You know, it's that big image and subsequently the title and the title should be Levi's 501 men's blue jeans size 32. Why is that so much better? Because this is how people search. You know, your consumer will either search for, for exactly that, or at least what the brand is, what the size is, what color he's after. And obviously they want spare jeans. Uh, so if there is a, uh, if there's a big match between the search query of the consumer and the title in the product ad, Google is going to say, Hmm, this guy is looking very specifically for a pair of jeans and I've got an ad here. That uh, that has a title. That's exactly that. So that must be a good match. So therefore, I should show this ad instead of other ads. So there you have it. An enriched title will get you more impressions, especially on the long tail searches. Uh, if your ad's out there, the customer is more likely to click it because hey, this is exactly what he was searching for, right? And after he clicks, he's just more likely to buy. Because after all, uh, he's getting exactly what he was looking for. So, uh, tight enrichment is my favorite example uh, for how to optimize data for campaign performance because it gets you more impressions, higher CTR, and higher conversion rate. And all of that by combining six fields for all of your products. So, brand, product type, uh, color, size, and what have you. Uh, in a in an intuitive tool like ours, uh, to achieve that will take you thirty seconds, and that's it. So it can be the, it can be this simple and can be that powerful. I think using a data feed should be done by every uh, merchant out there, and then some of them might use it already. And then you mentioned um, Google, obviously Google Merchant Center, and I think a lot of them the first problem they have they do not check on disapproved products. Um, so they just connect it to the immersion center and then I think it's fire and forget and then they wonder if nothing is coming in. Now, one question I have, a lot of stores go to the direction of um, multi-location, multi-language. So basically they want to have products in different um, countries announced. Does Data Feed Watch support that as well? How does that work? Yeah, absolutely. We have a lot of uh, merchants that, uh, for instance, have uh, 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 built locations on Shopify or on Magento, which means that uh, they're selling, let's say, the same 25,000 products in five different countries and therefore in five different languages. So basically, uh, they've already created five different stores in their shopping cart. Uh, where there's like really physically five or, you know, in a more harmonized way, like on, on Shopify and Magento, they have five stores. Uh, that means that they will create five stores in Data Feed Watch and will download the appropriate data, language data for each of the stores. And then your UK store, in your UK store, you will create a Data Feed for Google UK, uh, Facebook UK, Price Run the UK, whereas for the German store, you know, you may do some, you may do the same thing, for the local Google and Facebook, but maybe also add Zalando or uh, uh, Idealo or some other local language uh, uh, sites that require you to provide your data in the local language. Okay. 
question is when you set up your product in Shopify, for instance, or in WooCommerce, Magento, whatever it is, I think a lot of uh, merchants do not really fill in the most crucial information. What are the most important fields that they definitely need to have in their uh, on their product detail page when they um, feed in the data to make it really work? Uh, well, the stuff you probably won't be able to forget anyway when you uh, uh, start entering data in your store is stuff like uh, a title and the price. You know, those are really indispensable. Uh, what people tend to forget is uh, what Google would call optional fields. So, so, for example, apparel, every apparel product requires you to enter color and size and material and some other stuff as separate fields, right? Uh, so you now the retailer just enters the title, the price description, you know, everything's in there. So he's happy. Uh, and then he goes to David watch and then David says, Hey, you need to fill out the color field because it's apparel, right? We will, we will not let you save this feed until you've mapped the color field. Because, you know, if you don't, we know it's going to be disapproved. You know, we want to prevent that from happening and what have you. So uh, uh, the way to solve that outside, you know, either you go back into your store and you you fill out the color field for all of your 25,000 products. Uh, it's going to take you a couple of days, right? It's, that's not going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so just as an example, uh, most retailers also mention the color of a product in their description, right? So that in David Watch, you use an extract rule that will extract the colors from the description or your title or from somewhere else. And bang, uh, within a minute, you've created a color field or a size field that you didn't have in the uh, in, in the first place. So whatever you forget, uh, now 99% of the cases, you can make up for it uh, with an intelligent tool like uh, like Dave Watch. Okay, that's quite helpful. Now, when it comes to these different channels that you can use, and we said there's more than 2,000 in a ton of countries, so it's a lot. People mainly think about Google, Google Shopping. What would be the main ones that you would recommend to be also on beside of Google? Uh, well, uh, Klaus, we published a, a feed marketing report uh, in the course of last year. And, uh, uh, you know, as... David Watch is a top five global player. We felt that whatever is happening at David Watch is representative of what's happening in the, let's say, in, in the world of data feeds uh, globally. So one of the things that uh, that came out that I thought was very interesting is, uh, uh, like you say, the number of people that is using Google is like uh, 92%, right? And And people on social... Uh, it's like 54%. And then uh, the combination is 44%. So 44% for, of all retailers already do, let's say, Google and Facebook search and and and, and social. The next category uh, is only 11%, and that is affiliate networks. And I think that is the runner-up. And I think that that is really the one that's easy to forget. You know, people, you know, they're also uh, not doing... Uh, price comparison size on a, on the large scale. But uh, uh, be, because they, they think, hey, I'm, I'm on Google, so I'm good. You know, comparison happens there as well. But affiliate networks basically is like a different type of advertising. It is CPA based. Uh, so cost per acquisition, you know, cost per sale. Uh, it's therefore uh, pretty risk free because you know, you know, I'm bidding you five bucks to for every time you sell something uh, for me. Um, and it is it is not that hard to do. And again, you just need to create a daily feed to get there. So uh, I would recommend every retailer to uh, to look into affiliate networks. You know, it depends on your product. Maybe some products are less suited for it than others. But in many cases, it is a, a great type of advertising to add. Obviously, no, I only spoke about advertising channels right now, but the uh, the third biggest elephant in the room after Google and Facebook, or you know, even before Google and Facebook, is Amazon. So you know, whether you want to be on the marketplace or not, is a very fundamental uh, choice. Uh, on the one hand, you should be 
goes for you know at least half of the population in the Western world, especially in the US. Amazon is the starting point for a product search for consumers, even more so than Google. On the other hand, retailers are sometimes afraid that if I start advertising, sorry, if I start selling on Amazon, uh, I will not be longer in control of the uh, customer relationship. Uh, and uh, if I'm going to be very successful at Amazon, maybe they're going to sell my stuff by themselves and then you know, they're running me out of business. Uh, so those are you know, things to consider. But in terms of where is your consumer, he's on Amazon. He is, she is, it is. Uh, so obviously the holy trinity of search, social and marketplaces, Google, Facebook, Amazon is the first thing uh, to consider for every retailer. Okay, yeah, I'm 100% with you on the same page when it comes to Amazon. It's a two-sided word there. Um, obviously, people go to Amazon with a bias intention. So out of the bat, they are already better customers if they buy from you. But you're 100% right. Amazon keeps your data. Amazon can be a risk. And at the end, Amazon is also a very expensive channel if you sell over Amazon because they take a ton of money from, from you, from the merchant um, to make it work. But nevertheless, you should be on Amazon. I 100% agree on that one. When a person wants to start um, optimizing the data feeds, what kind of homework do they need to do before they can really get started? Uh, before they get started, well, you know, if you sign up to Data Feed Watch, uh, there's not much homework to do because we're we have a template-based system, so we're sort of forcing you into the right direction. And uh, if you feel like doing something stupid, uh, we won't let you. Right, we won't let you save a bad feed. Uh, we'll show you a feed review uh, if you do save it, so you can see where you uh, where you go wrong. Uh, but uh, maybe uh, maybe homework is not uh, uh, the thing we should be looking for. But you know, what are the kind of uh, what can you do with data feed optimization that will actually improve the results of your campaign? So fixing problems. Uh, you know, it's fixing problems. It's not sexy. It has to be done. It's against disapprovals. Then again, mind you, if 20% of your product is being disapproved, for example, because you didn't add a color field, that also has a big impact on your sales because now you're selling only 80% of your products on Google instead of 100. So fixing problems, fixing disapproval is really uh, super important. And then if you look into, into optimization, I already gave you the title example, you know, that's, that, that's number one, but let's not forget the images. Uh, images are not necessarily something that you can optimize within a data feed tool. Uh, however, since the image comprises, what would it be class 60, 66% of the total space of a product ad. And since humans have become way more visual uh, uh, over time, the image is your, you know, is your killer ad. You do not have good images, forget it. You, know, you will lose the battle from your competitors who did invest in good images. And good doesn't only mean that uh, you know, they are without text and they're, they're on a white background and stuff like that. Uh, it means they need to be high quality with a lot of pixels and uh, uh, yeah, don't don't put the article uh, on your kitchen table and use your iPhone to take a picture. Go to the studio and, and make real beautiful pictures. They are compelling. Uh, so yeah, spend time on that. And in terms of optimizing your images uh, for your feed, you probably you know, have like an average of five images uh, uh, in your feed anyway, then just make sure that you map your best image uh, as the main image and the rest as additional uh, images. A uh, third one, you know, basically I'm, 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 I'm talking out of my own experience, but also by looking at what the Data Feed Watch clientele actually does, right? So uh, optimizing fields title is number one, image is number two, also because it, it, it gets you a lot of errors. Uh, but uh, creating custom labels is uh, is the third one. So uh, a custom label is something that is in Google and Facebook and some other uh, channels like that. Uh, it enables you to put a put out a bit on something that's not like the, the ID or the brand or the product type or something like. That. So you want to bid on something else, you create a custom label for it. 
So we see that our customers are creating custom labels for products that are on sale or in a certain category, or the, 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 the making a custom label for the best sellers. It makes sense, right? You got your best sellers, you want to sell more, so you want to bid 10% more uh, on that. Uh, also, custom labels will, will help you to, uh, to maybe enhance your bidding, right? So you may be selling uh, shoes, and you're, making, uh, you're selling that at a CPA of, let's say, 15 bucks, and you're making profit, and you, you're, you're a happy camper, right? Uh, but then at some point, uh, you drill down in the data, and then you actually see that uh, among your shoes, 20% is like cheap shoes, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the gross margin, uh, the gross margin after subtracting the 15 bucks CPA, uh, is zero or even negative. So you're losing money on the cheap shoes. Uh, you're making lots of money on the medium sized, uh, medium priced shoes. And then the, the high end shoes, you're making a boatload of product, uh, sorry, a boatload of profit. However, you're not selling that many. So now you can introduce custom labels for, uh, let's say three price categories of all of your mm -hmm. shoes. And then you're going to bid less on the cheap shoes. So CPA goes down to 10 bucks. You're still making money. Uh, medium price shoes, you're good. High price shoes, uh, you're going to increase your bid. Your profit is going, is going to go down, but your sales is going to skyrocket. And altogether, you're making even more money than you did. So drilling the down, drilling down in the data and then using custom labels to optimize your bids, uh, that's also a way to get really profitable. Okay. I think there's a ton of golden nuggets that you just mentioned there to really make it work. Tell me a little bit about, about the pricing on the setup and the onboarding. How does that work? Um, pricing starts at uh, 69 US dollars per month and it goes up via 89 to uh, 239 to you know, whatever you need. We have a modular pricing, so that means that uh, uh, we're already quite affordable for uh, SMB uh, uh, retailers, uh, but we also have a lot of uh, uh, very large and enterprise level customers, like for example, Adidas, uh, who get tailored pricing because they have like, you know, tens of thousands of products in dozens and dozens of countries. So uh, anything goes, but you only pay for what you need and you're not paying anything uh, extra. The, the average customer signs up the daily feed watch and then uh, connects his store. And then the first thing we ask, like not even a person, but on the screen, you want to set up your own feeds or you want us to do it? The majority of the customer says, no, no I want to do it myself. But still there's a fat chunk of customers says, yeah, you guys do it for me, right? So uh, no worries about setup, no worries about uh, needing to understand how to do it. We'll just do it for you and it will run uh, and you just need to Copy the link of the feed into your Google Merchant Center or Facebook Business Center, and 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 you're good to go. But for the ones that uh, want to do it themselves, uh, they can uh, they can get an onboarding call. So it usually takes like you know half an hour more or less. Uh, the Refit Voice is very intuitive, uh, so it's easy to explain uh, what to do in order to optimize your feed. Yeah. By the end of the call, we probably mapped your first feed. You can probably instantly copy it. Uh, to the next channel and 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 you're good to go as well lastly uh since you know i use the word tool a lot david watch is a tool you need to do it yourself but like i said we do onboarding we'll do it for you anything you want most importantly i will say 50 percent of what we do is the tool the other 50 percent is support so we provide support almost around the clock uh first response time is often like less than uh, 30 seconds. So with a single click, you're talking to somebody uh, who will instantly you know, solve your problem, uh, advise you how to create a custom label, uh, discuss with you uh, what to exclude uh, in order to be more profitable and, and what have you. So even customers that are, you know, have been with us for like years and know the tool better than I do, they will still hit the chat balloon every once in a while to get some help, to get some advice and what have you. Because after all, we have people that have been doing this for years on a daily basis. So Daily Feed Watch is a service. It is not a tool. Okay. Oh, that sounds great. Where can people find more about you guys? Uh, dailyfeedwatch.com. 
you'll find everything there about the service. Uh, we have an incredibly uh, a large blog where you'll find basically articles on, on any possible way to optimize your product data and your campaign performance. Okay, I will put the link in the show notes and you just one click away. Chuck, thanks so much for giving a very in-depth overview of what Data Feed Watch can do for merchants. I think having a good data feed is crucial for every business that wants to grow. So I, for the ones that are listening and don't have a data feed activated right now, definitely look into Data Feed Watch. Thanks so much for the call today. All righty. Thanks a lot, Klaus. Have a good one. You too. Hey, Klaus here. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple of important points to share. Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? Fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision. But perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community and remember your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you then.